towards the end of my run at Wiley, we would go to Disney World every other year. But there was always a group of about 20 or 30 band parents during that same time. They'd give me their kids and they'd go to Vegas. Did it? <laughs> but I had band parents that would work in the concessions like four years after their kid graduated. Right. Think about that for a second, because if you try to do everything, trust me on this, brother, everyone will let you try. <laughs> they'll watch and commit. They'll, they'll watch and they'll tell you how you did it wrong. You know, <laughs> but everyone will, oh yeah, Mike wants to do everything. Go for it, Mike. Not you it. know, they'll let you. Yeah. Most parents don't mind helping in the band boosters. What they hate is meetings. Well, good morning, everyone. Here we are uh, with our friend, Mike Lunny again. Mike, how are you doing this morning? Doing well. How about you, Derek? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. It's, uh, <laughs> listen, yesterday in West Texas, I don't know where everybody is that's that's uh, tuned in with us. It was pretty windy last night. I was kind of wondering what we were we were looking yeah. for. But today seems to be beautiful. The sun's out and my flowers are blooming and my dogs licked my hand this morning. So it's a pretty good day. <laughs> it's a good day. It's a good day. And I got coffee. So that makes it a great day as well. It's perfect. Um, listen, we, we were... I was listening to some conversation uh, between you and our friend Rick in the chair. And I'm just kind of curious. Um, we've done, this will be our third installment of what we're kind of calling the end of the year checklist or, you know, how mm -hmm. to survive the end of the year. And I just want to make sure that people understand our, our intent is to help. Our intent is to say, look, there's lots of, there's lots of ways to do things, right? Yeah, but a lot of smart people have kind of compiled and, and contributed to uh, something that can help everyone, mm -hmm. not just <clears throat> for this week or the next five or six weeks, but as you get ready for next year, you know, a lot of success, I think, comes from planning and from uh, not being too nervous to accept the wisdom of others. Is that fair? Would you? Change the way I said that? No, no, I think that's fair. Okay. Sometimes I think we also get, and I know from living that life, we get so busy that we're just trying to keep our head above water. And so sometimes it's hard to accept new information because like, I'm just trying to survive, but we're trying to help them survive with more than their head above water. <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also pretty guilty of this. That's awesome. I need to make sure I watch that and go on and finish something else and never get back to it. Right. So it's not that I intentionally don't want help. I just get so busy and forget. And yeah. in, in the uh, in the interest of saying that, one thing that I don't say very often, because we don't, I just haven't done this, but if you'll hit the subscribe button on this, on the YouTube channel, if you'll hit the, the bell, if you want to, you'll get alerts when new stuff comes out. Mm -hmm. I also want to make sure everybody understands that these are three separate and distinct conversations. Yeah. Having said all that, that's my advertisement. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I think uh, I think that we should just jump right in, man. And I, again, the the point of what we're doing is some things that we can do now as teachers, band, orchestra, choir, fine arts, whatever. Yeah. That, that help us close <laughs> our kids engaged at the same time and set us up for success next year. Yes. So big idea number one for today. What you got? Well, the, the biggest thing is dealing with uh, getting band boosters prepped and ready for the following year. What's coming up with them. Um, some of the just logistical things we've got to make sure we take care of. Obviously, we have to find new officers. <clears throat> you know, the people that have been in the organization kind of bring them up. That could be a whole podcast unto itself. But we've got to make sure we get new officers elected. Um, a little thing that we tend to forget until all of a sudden fall hits, make sure to, when you get your new officers, double check the signature card at the bank, you know, just get that taken care of. So you don't find yourself in a bind, um, trying to get things, money moved to get things set up, um, work with a, a budget with your boosters. I, it seems like a lot of times we just go in and say, Hey, raise the money. We'll figure it out later, but try to figure out a budget of what do you want? What's your vision as a band director? A lesson program, uh, is there a trip involved or um, or trying to buy some equipment? Whatever it is, communicate that to your band parents. Can okay. I, can I ask you something as a new director? Okay. Sometimes I wondered the the boosters. What, what's the chain of command there? 
they work for the program, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the director needs to know that this is still my vision. This is still my program. Here's how I need you to help me. Yes, that's exactly how to approach it. You've got to be willing to communicate enough to where you can communicate to them what your vision is for the program. And of course, take ideas from the boosters as well. But between all of us, we do it. But I kind of always told my booster clubs that, uh, you know, we can vote on whatever we vote on. But as the school gives me the authority to have the final veto, you know, if we don't want to spend money on something, then I can veto that. And and it's done with love, you know, because we want the we want the kids to do what they need to do and, and prepare them for financially for what needs to happen. And that is not to say that they aren't <clears throat> incredible help to a successful school music program. Did not mean that at all. Got right. to need them, appreciate them, but understanding that they work for the school music program, not vice versa. Right, because the roles are vastly different between what the boosters do and what the directors have to do. And some schools that I've gone in to help out with their booster clubs, um, I'll go in and do like a little workshop with them, kind of help them out a little bit. Um, I find that they've crossed that line where the booster club feels like they're the ones that need to set what's the trip going to be? What are we going to do? How, what's our rehearsal schedule like? Um, so we just have to make sure that everybody knows what their lane is. Yeah, that's a good yeah. way to put that. Yeah. And and, commercials stay in your lane. That's right. They've got to stay in everyone, including the director, has to stay in their lane. OK, um, make sure that you have a booster meeting calendar for the next year so that it's all communicated up front. Um, registration dates for the band, uh, uniform fittings, um, meetings, things of that nature. And you mentioned this a second ago, but review the roles of boosters versus directors because they are not the same. We right. do not fulfill the same roles, and we've already discussed that. <clears throat> a really important one, <clears throat> excuse me, double check with administration to make sure there's no changes in terms of district expectations for the booster clubs. Okay, explain that a little. I don't I don't. Get that's, it. That's, that's important because they might, uh, an, an easy one. Some schools, all of a sudden over the summer, they might change and say, hey, band boosters, you're, you really don't need to have your own checking account. We need all the monies put in an activity account activity. here through the school. <clears throat> so sometimes things like that will happen, which is pretty drastic. But it might simply be the boosters are used to decorating the band hall on their own with no band director there before contest. Right. And the right. new principal might say, I don't want a bunch of parents, you know, just roaming the halls without a, a, an employee available. What if, what if a parent got hurt? Right. What if someone fell? Um, so just make sure to talk to them, to talk to them, okay? Ooh, Get okay. set up for well, like snacks during summer band, things of that nature. Um, and again, like we mentioned before, articulate the program goals to all. You know, what are the goals of the program? Um, I find that my band parents worked harder, and they, they always were a hardworking crew, man. They were like their own corporation. But um, they worked harder and with more passion when they knew what the goals were. I think we all, like, when we know yeah. the why, we're, we're much more apt to commit. Yeah, instead of, uh, let's just raise money. <laughs> you know, right. they, they knew what the goals were. Um, the next thing I want to kind of talk about is uh, a problem that I think almost every band, orchestra, choir director can, uh, can attest to. How do we get more parents involved in our booster club? Because that that's always a problem, okay? And... Uh, Chris Cooper over at uh, LaGrange High School, he he jumped into that program. Booster Club was pretty much non-existent at that point. And he called me and said, uh, hey, can you come do a workshop with our Booster Club? And I said, sure. So I came and met with the ones that were there. And uh, we devised a plan. And I used to use the set of questions with my parents. Um, and he kind of fleshed it out into a big, giant Google form, which will be on the you can uh, copy it down. It'll be a downloadable item on this on this podcast. Um, <clears throat> but the thing I found out way late in my career is that most parents don't mind helping in the band boosters. What they hate is meetings. I think that's not just band boosters, but <laughs> yeah, it church. Same right. way in church, you know, you get the and, uh, band directors and choir and orchestra directors think that, hey, you know, just no one's interested. So we set up this uh, set of questions. I want to go through some of them to kind of uh, have people understand. And what we did was we embed this in a Google form 
And that way the band parents, when they register their kid and put like shoe size and t-shirt size and download the physical and all that stuff, then there's a little survey. And some of the questions, I think I give like credit to Chris Cooper for the really good ones. So I had a real bare bones. He really fleshed it out. His first question. I love this one. Do you like being around teenagers? He said, we love chill. This all yes and no. But some people don't desire to be around a large group of teenagers. We have roles that don't require you to be around a large group of students. But if you enjoy being around the band, we have roles for you too. Yes or no. Do you prefer working by yourself on a project and not having to consult with other people? That's a really cool question. Right. Um, because we would have people who would write grants to get money for our program that just wanted to do it all by themselves. Okay. Would you rather work in a group like a committee to work on social activities or fundraisers for the band or parent group? Do you prefer being in roles in which you don't have to attend meetings? That's a cool one, you know, because we had parents that never attended one meeting. Now kind of stopping there for a second, our first meeting of the year, we'd have 50, 60 band parents. By the time you got to marching contest, it'd be about 15, 20. By the time it got to January 1st, I would have my executive board with maybe two parents. But meanwhile, they were raising a ton of money. They right. just didn't want to come to the meetings, okay? And I love this question. Are you the type of person that prefers things to be very detailed and meticulous? Okay. Do you prefer to give instruction or to receive instruction? Interesting question. <clears throat> Do you enjoy planning and making decisions for projects or events? And I like this one because this one really comes in handy in today's band environment. Do you have experience with and would enjoy helping to create wood or metal props? Please know which type of material you can help with. And then our then it goes through some other stuff. Do you have experience or a desire to write grants to obtain money for the band program? Um, do you have the ability to teach music within our program? If so, please list what you play or used to play. <laughs> does, does Microsoft Office or Google Docs Sheets interest you as a skill that you could use as a band parent? Are you comfortable or feel more gifted with vocal communication? Do you feel comfortable working with money within our band booster organization? Do you have any background or desire to help with band fundraising? Or are you comfortable visiting with local businesses? And when you go through these questions, they can answer yes and no, but then there's a box that's not required. They can write some comments. And what I would do is I would take this set of questions and then myself and the current band parent president and vice president, secretary, treasurer, et cetera, communication chair, we would sit down and we'd take all these comments from all these Google forms from these parents, and then we'd slot them into what makes them most comfortable. <clears throat> so we might have a, three band parents, all they do is build props. We might have four band parents. All they do is work with uniforms. We might have a committee of four that just write grants. And that's all that's, I say all, but you know what I'm saying? They do that one little tiny slice of the pie. So when you get all that combined together, then the parents are all find ownership in the program, but they're not having to come up to a meeting. They're not having to be in a position where they're uncomfortable because I, I had parents that uh, loved to ride the bus. I had parents that hated being around a large group of teenagers. And I think the funniest one, old Will Miller, hopefully he'll listen to this podcast. <laughs> he's over in Greenwood. And uh, he, he was a band kid of mine. His dad loved, Jay loved riding the bus. They called him Mr. Will's dad. <laughs> that was his name. So he just went by Mr. Will's dad. But he brought snacks from Sam's every Friday night for bus trips or whatever and passed out honey buns and whatever. And just a great man. And still, still of course is a great man, but I just think back and think now Will's a band director, his son's a band director. So hopefully he'll have a lot of guys like his dad in his band parent organization, helping out over at Greenwood. And I've met Will. He's awesome. He's he is. Awesome. He's, he's a great kid. Kid. Listen to me. He's an adult. Sorry. Sorry, Will. <laughs> <laughs> we get to an age and everybody's a kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get off my lawn. Yeah, but that's right. The, the one of the this is going to be obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. What I think is really cool about that questionnaire survey, whatever you want to label it, mm -hmm. it removes assumption because I think the assumption without that is they're going to be on me all the time to do things that I don't want to do. And I don't mean yes. that are, are negative, but that's the way the human brain works. We kind yeah. of focus on why we don't want to do something until somebody says it's not like that. It's simple. Yeah. You can find something you like to do. Everything helps. 
and you can do something that you're a gifted at or b enjoy more nobody's going to force you to do a lot of things that you don't want to do right and it delineates to a certain extent what is required in the job right. instead of would you ride the bus a very general job description yeah yeah and parents are going do i have to check role do i have to handle discipline do i have to clean up the bus what you know what what's what's going on here um so i think that this and i kind of did a survey it started with just tell me things you would like to do that didn't work very well because parents were they're busy but this is like a yes or no thing and i'll give the credit to chris cooper he took what i did and fleshed it out into a an amazing uh any the way he does it he embeds it in with his google forms and we'll get to that right, right towards the end on what he does on his web page but that way the parents it just kind of falls in their lap they don't open up an email for it they're just going oh my kid wears a 10 and a half shoe extra large t-shirt oh band parent survey oh okay you know and they do that and then they go through, okay download your physical do this and it's just all in one big shot you know and i also think it's human nature to want to click on links <laughs> yes yes to? and there yeah. you yeah yeah so it, it, i think it's a really cool thing and at the bottom he put a a volunteer application form which with band parents is getting with security is getting more and more important there was a day when just anyone's parent just jumped on the bus now they some schools to the point where you have to fingerprint them. They have to have a badge, things. Of, and I agree with that. We've got to keep the kids safe. You There's know, um, do that to actually the, go in schools and work. So, yeah, yeah, I, I do. Too. Yeah, definitely. So it gives them a, a link on here to where they can go to the to the place they need to go to in their school district where it's like, okay, get that taken care of. So it's not like, Hey, I want to ride the bus Friday. And it's like Thursday afternoon. I said, well, I don't have you on my list as a volunteer. Oh, we have to do something, you know, so it kind of alleviates that problem as well. Okay. The other thing this does, I just love this. It, it, it's instant credibility to the head director. Look how much you've thought out. Look how much you've answered before I even try to figure out how to get an answer. It's all right here. Yes. And it, it really is incredible because the parents feel like I do want to get involved. This is a well thought out system. Right. This kind no of one wants no different. one wants to volunteer for something. You've done that at church, I'm sure I have. You show up for some kind of committee, and no one knows what's going on and what's going to happen, and what are we supposed to do? One year, I was on the committee, nominating committee for the committee on committees for a Baptist church. You know, so it, you know it what is what it is. Me, if I show up and it's like that, that's the only one I show up for. Yeah, and that's kind of how I approached it as well. I said, you, you right. guys know how to get a hold of me. I said, send me information if you need help on something. But uh, but you're right. I think it gives them a, a well-thought-out program. Um, the other thing I really think has worked well for us and has worked well for other groups I've worked with, um, do some sort of a, a little concert at the end of summer band. Okay. It could be a, we call it our pre, we call it our show preview concert is what we call it at Wiley. Um, but the the kids show up. It's like the Friday night, the last week of summer band. We feed them some pizza. The parents bring some stuff, and then the kids play through as much of the show as we can. Hopefully, all of the show. Guard does routines. Percussion plays a couple of cadences, but it brings in the parents and the grandparents and so forth. Now, in the lobby outside the gym or the workout facility, we set up tables. And at those tables, they weren't like blocking the entrance, but it was just right there. But those tables all had big signs above them, like sign up to work concessions, sign up for bus trips, sign up for this. Uh, make sure your child's uh, shoes and uniform and everything's taken care of. You know, it had all this and our current band parents would sit there and they would uh, man those tables and parents would come in and, and I'd make announcements during the concert. Hey, make sure you stop by those tables and sign in. We would get all almost all of our concession stand workers done yeah, filled out completely that day. So it makes a big difference to just get the parents as they come in and ask them to go look. And did everyone go by the table? No, no, they didn't all go by the table, but, uh, but enough did that we could fill out all our positions. Okay. So I'm going to just say, okay, go for it. We're, we're involved with a lot of different people. Obviously I want to give a uh, kind of a shout out to the legacy high school guys over in Midland they do a really, and I'm sure a lot of people do this. I'm not saying they are exclusive to it, but one Saturday during summer band, they invite people who they invite all the parents. It's, it's the back to back to band day. Right. So whether they are incoming freshmen or all the way through the seniors, they come in, we all set up in one of the big, I think it's the student union or the cafeteria. 
and it, as you say, there's just tables, and it's not band parents per se, but it is band parents. Right. They, you sign up, then people are there with liars and you know sell gloves and and it's just about eight different tables eight different stations of things that people will need to be ready for the school year and it's not tied to their concert per se i know that midland high does it that way that they have a big meeting um it, same way in their auditorium i just think the important part i'm trying to make is i think the parents appreciate getting everything done in one stop yes they don't have to go all over town to find shoes, gloves, valve oil, liars, flip folders. Everything is brought into one location at the school, and they say this is when it's going to happen. And then we we take care of everybody in one day and one morning. I just think that's a cool idea. Yes. To, to slide along there with what you're talking about. Yeah, and for the parents, too, it's the right equipment. Right. Yeah, how many times do they just go and order something, you know, and – I don't know, things happen and they show up with something that's different and you got to work through all that rigmarole. Mm -hmm. So it does help them tremendously in that regard. And uh, I've even seen uh, groups, and this is really hilarious. I did it when I was in holiday. I don't know why I didn't do it and why Lee should have, but we would have the parents come up on a Monday night rehearsal and the kids would teach the parents how to march. Uh, and they would do a little routine and uh and you can do as far as you want to i know barbara lambrick who is just an amazing educator um she said she did this when she was at macarthur in san antonio the parents would learn how to march and then they would have them perform at a halftime game in the end zone they do step two drills <laughs> while the band played and she said the parents were so serious they they wanted to have shirts they wanted to making sure they did things right and they didn't play an instrument they literally just marched um but anything you can do to get them excited about band uh, is obviously going to be in your such favor. an important part of what's going on and i don't know that they always get credit and i think that allowing them to participate like that is just phenomenal what a great idea yeah. And the, the last thing to say about that is the fact if you set up situations like that, what it does is it develops relationships between the band parents. They start to know each other. That's cool. So, but in, in fact, I had, this is so bizarre. I don't know why they did it, but I had band parents that would work in the concessions like four years after their kid graduated. Right. Think about that for a second, because they enjoyed coming up and seeing the band and making change and making hot dogs. They're yeah, amazing. Yeah, they're, they're invested. invested. Yeah, their kids graduating from Texas Tech, and here they are uh, throwing around hot dogs in my concession stand. You know, so I think that is the key is develop those relationships. When I, you know, I was at Caldwell before I was at Intune, and somewhere in that uh, progression, Ector Junior High, Extra mm -hmm. Middle School in Odessa. Uh, good friend Jeff Patterson was there for a long time. And he had a band parent who was well advanced in age that had been there for 30 plus years because that mattered to her. And I think that she saw what it did for her children. And, the, you know, it was almost kind of, uh, I don't know what the right word is. That, that was kind of her mission in life was to make sure every kid got taken care of in a fine arts yeah. program like that. Yeah. It's great. You're, and sometimes they'll develop those relationships to where I remember towards the end of my run at Wiley, we would go to Disney world every other year, but there was always a group of about 20 or 30 band parents during that same time. They'd give me their kids and they'd go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Not with band parent money. Be careful here. <laughs> they would just schedule their vacation. About 20 of them would go to Vegas and, and go gamble and see some shows and whatever, because That's they didn't have to worry about their kid. I, I had their kid, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. What's big? What's the last big one you got? The last big one I've got is uh, setting up some sort of social media, whether it's a web page, whether it's a Facebook. I think a web page is, uh, I know it's antiquated in some ways, but again, with Chris Cooper, he was he allowed me to use a copy of his web page i just copy paste it off of his web page and it's on that downloadable document and it's it's kind of a registration thing it has all the stuff for that but it has even more than that it has all the spring marching workshops it has all the drum major color guard percussion workshops and like you said before it has links for everything click here for leadership team application you know click here for uniform registration click let me ask you this uh, question okay so you've been there that's why i'm asking I know that most ISDs have an ISD website with a 
click on to go to the different schools. And most of the school websites has some version, whether it's a, a teacher landing page or an organizational landing page. But I know so many of, of my friends out there, their band, their orchestra, their choir has a separate web page that's not part of the ISD web page. Right. And and no offense to any of the ISD uh, webmasters, but typically it's much more easy to navigate. It's flashier. It presents the program the way the director wants to present it. Yes. And they can, but my question is, okay, is that acceptable to most ISD? I mean, obviously it is. They do it. Is there a preference in your opinion? Do you care if it's off the ISD web page or on and do you think there is that done by boosters is that done by i mean i'm trying not to add more responsibility to a director who's already got plenty of responsibility just quick thoughts on that yeah i think that uh <clears throat> with uh schools they tend to like you to have your web page on their total system but I know very few that do that. Uh, mine that I was very fortunate they would allow me to have my own web page through my band parents, but they'd allow me to have a link off of the school web page. So if you said activities would go to band, pure gold band or whatever, click you'd go directly to to our web domain, you know that we paid for. And you're right, if if the band parents do the page, then it's uh it's usually done more elaborate because if you turn any booster group loose. They will do things 10 times fancier than it needs to be done. Where a school webmaster will uh, like, oh, well, we just need the information. So no, no, we need like 400 pictures. We need this and we need a new logo. We need to do this. So it really is kind of cool. But um, but I liked it because it was easier for multiple people to access the page. If it's all on the school system, then generally I'm the only one who can access it. Right. to change things. So that made it to where I had a communication chair that did all my email blast, uh, took care of all the social media. And so literally when I had something to announce to the band, like weekly updates, I would just send an email to he or her, you know, to, to post and they would take care of that for me. They'd put it on the webpage. I also think that might be a good question to go in your questionnaire that you send out. Are you yeah. web savvy? Yeah, we, we tried to kind of sneak that in with a, the uh, do you like to communicate vocally or do you like to do written communication? And we would kind of combine those two to find a communication chair. And yeah. then we and pretty much anyone who wants to be web savvy nowadays can be web savvy. Right. You know, you know, it's not an it's not an art form that's mystical like it used to be in the past. You know, right. now I'm trying to be respectful of everybody's time, but this is Ask Mike. So I do okay. want, <laughs> need to ask Mike one more question here. Okay. Um, this was a great conversation and it seemed to focus a lot around your booster program. Yes. Cause that you can't have a good band without a booster program, but, that period. How many guys out there in middle school classifications, junior high classifications, one A's, two A's think, I don't, why do I need a band booster program? Agree, disagree. I think it's for everyone, but I'm I'm, I'm I, in your opinion. I think it's for everyone. It just it's whatever level you want to scale it to. I think we as especially marching band directors have uh, undertaken such a huge ordeal that uh, we have to have. You cannot operate in a full size band with without a booster club. There might come the situation like in a middle school band or orchestra or choir where they might say, you know, do I really need all this? Maybe not all of it. But just think of all the things they could do. If you had people approved by the school as volunteers who could count your fundraising money, then put in the activity fund, or you had parents who could help. We had parents who'd come Even in out and of your desk that. drawer. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And we'd have parents who'd come up and uh they would volunteer for a certain amount of hours per month. And then they we'd have a little Google calendar they could sign up on. They would come make copies. Think about that for a second. We'd have some, some of those guys were like doctors and attorneys that they would volunteer. So, well, I can't do a whole lot, but I can do three hours. Fine. They would show up. We'd have like a workstation set up with a copy machine. They'd run through it. So whatever level you need to take it to, think of it in terms of uh, it's not something you're undertaking as having a booster club that causes more work for you. It causes a little bit of work for you, but just think of the the things they can do. They can help. They can tighten stands. They can fix choir risers. They can, 
you know, they can do things that the school would take a long time to get to. You walked yeah. right into, you, you realized your experience is teaching. My experience has been largely observational, but I've been watching guys like you work for 30 plus years. And one of the things that I think a booster club helps with, no matter what the size of your program is, number one, you're not alone. Right. Number two, it gets rid. If you refuse to do it, sometimes I, I watch people, I call it the martyr syndrome. I'm doing everything and killing myself because that's what I've got to do. It's not what you got to do. Get some help. Yeah. It's the program. Yeah. And those parents want to help. They don't want to be there every day because they've got lives, sure. but they do want to help. They do want to help. And the last thing I would say is we, sometimes we limit ourselves by the way we think. If you don't start thinking bigger, you'll never get bigger. Yes. And one of the things we do to get bigger is we get help. Yes. We delegate. We quit trying to do everything ourselves. We admit that there's things I might not be good at. Even in a booster club, can you not agree, Mike, that maybe we staff to our weakness? Is yes. Somebody out there that can do something that will help my program so I can quit stressing that and do the things I'm good at. Yes. And that is the that's the goal. Remember our first checklist thing about what does the director have to do? What can parents do? What can staff do? What can kids do? And so sometimes you're right. Some directors try to do everything and it's there's too much to do. Right. And you, some of that to get help. And I fight this. So I'm not being too ugly about it. And it's why I'm so passionate about it is. Sometimes I say I could do that better. I'm better at that. I sh I don't want somebody else screwing that up. And that's just being blunt and honest and transparent. Yeah. And that's a very important point because when I first started getting my booster club bigger and bigger and bigger, there are times when people would do things in a certain way that's like, man, I wouldn't have done it that way. But the results happened and I didn't have to do it. You know, so sometimes you got to kind of swallow your OCD pride of, uh, you know, and trying to tell it doesn't help you if you get all these people to help you out and then you tell them all exactly what to do. You give them the mission. I need communication for the Disney trip. Or the, here's our calendar. Can you do that? It, and I'd think I probably wouldn't do it that way, but it's that works. But it worked. And it's, it worked. And sometimes it's better than I would have done many times. And I also think there's <laughs> a, a rear view mirror that happens. At some point where you go, you flip from, uh, I have to do it all to, well, if that person doesn't do it, that means I have to, to do it. Right. And you realize that you've become more comfortable with delegating and the program hasn't fallen apart and people can help. Yes. And they'll actually have more ideas said, I guess the, you know, if you can use the information on that downloadable document, you know, set up a web page, set up that Google form within embed it within your regular registration process with the links. And I guarantee you'll have twice as many parents helping out, not necessarily coming to the meetings, but twice as many helping out. And so I think every, almost every clinic I go to, we start talking about, you know, we go to eat dinner or whatever. And usually that comes up. I mean, I just don't have any parents that'll do anything. Um, I think those parents are there. And depending on the community, some communities have more, some bands are band towns. Some bands are not necessarily band towns. Or we're trying to build them into band towns. Uh, but there are parents there. There's more than three, you know, that'll do something. If you set it up correctly for them. I also think that a band town, was developed it didn't just happen by accident that's right and those band towns i would this is might be heresy but the, those band towns are developed i think it was more the parents than the band director but i the parents are the town yeah <laughs> but it started yeah. when a director got them excited and involved that's right and just carries over you know because if you try to do everything trust me on this brother everyone will let you try <laughs> they'll watch and commit. They'll, they'll watch and they'll tell you how you did it wrong. You know, <laughs> but everyone will, oh yeah, Mike wants to do everything. Go for it, Mike. Not you know, they'll let you. They're not going to uh, interfere. Mike, do me a favor. We're, we're going a little bit over here, but I want you to kind of sum a summarization of the last three things that you want us to remember as we before we move on to another topic. As far as this checklist, big takeaways. What's my takeaway from this three sessions we've done? Well, the biggest big takeaways would be for the first two podcasts, the things you can do to make your life less stressful. 
if you just take a little bit of time to plan uh, and use some sort of checklist, mine, yours, Doug Fullwoods, whoever, you know, use a checklist. Um, the other thing is, I think the next big takeaway is band parents. They're such a vital resource to what we do. Um, uh, they do so much to help us out, but we've got to set up a plan for them. You can't just say, would you be band parent president or right, figure it out? Right. You've got to have some sort of system for them to fit into uh, to make that work. So that'd be my two biggest takeaways that have made my life a whole lot easier when I just did those two things. Perfect. So we've got all this on a in a document. You can download it at the website. Uh, Rick's going to put that website on the, the screen for you so you know where to go to get that. And I also want to stress uh, that uh, if you have other questions for our esteemed colleague, please send that. Rick's going to put that email address up there ask mike at intunemusic.com uh we'd love to listen i need to make sure you understand just like we've been talking about in these i don't know that we think we're absolutely experts at this and not trying to put mike in a awkward place of uh, of i know everything because i don't think that's mike that's not who he is but he's <laughs> done it a while and so if you have a question well mike how'd you do that that that's what we're here for and and uh, we'd love to get any response, any comments. Let us know what you think. And uh, aside from that, I appreciate you, Mike Lunny. I hope you have an awesome week. Hope everybody else has an awesome week. And we will talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Derek.